Hey guys, how are you going? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use CSS Grid in order to create a basic layout just like this for your web projects. So, this video is intended for people who are just starting out using CSS Grid and basically, I'm going to be covering most of the main features so that you can get started and of course start implementing CSS Grid for your own web projects. So, this right here is a basic layout. We have a header, we have some content sections, and we have of course the footer. So basically, this layout is going to support this right here. So, this uh, sort of two column content layout as well as a three column content layout just like this so there's a small change in the CSS in order to transform this right here into this right here so of course you can choose which one suits your scenario better so anyway let's go inside uh, this HTML file right here we're going to start from scratch to create that layout so inside the text editor it looks something like this it is a plain HTML skeleton. So first, um, to get started, we need to, of course, specify HTML. So let's create a container. So a div with a class of container um, for the actual grid container. So then inside the CSS, let's just firstly target the body and set a margin of zero to remove the default margin this way. I can say container, so target the class of container and say width and make this 100 viewport width and for the height we can say 100 viewport height and of course the combination of these three means that the container is going to take up the entire width and height of the web page. So now saving this and refreshing uh, inside the dev tools if I was to hover over the container we can see it spans the entire width and the height of the available um, viewing area. I'm also just going to go back inside here and specify some font styling uh, to make things easier for us to read. So font family, let's make this uh, quick sand with sans serif and for the font weight let's make this bold um, and also a font size of something like 20 pixels. So now um, that is all set so we can now move on to actually using CSS Grid. So for this we need to firstly specify that our container is going to be a grid or a grid container. For this, we can say display and make this grid. So now we are ready to start adding some grid items or at least specify our layer. So now I just want to go back to um, the previous layout right here because um, now of course our grid right here is ready to actually be used. We need to specify the amount of columns and the amount of rows um, and also their sizes for our base layer. That's basically how grid works. You've got this base grid layer of rows and columns in the background and then once your layout is complete, you can say that certain elements are gonna span multiple rows or multiple columns or even a combination of the two. So with that being said, let's go back to this example and analyze and take a look at um, our columns and rows for this layer. As we can see here, um, in terms of rows, we've got four rows in total. We've got one row, we've got two rows, three rows, and then four rows. Okay, even though this content right here is spanning multiple rows, we still consider this to have a total of four rows, one, two, three, and then four. In terms of columns, this actually has three columns even though two are visible. We've got one, we've got two, and we've got three. That's easier to explain on this example right here with the three column layer, one, two, and three. So with that being said, this is a four by three um, layer, which means we can specify this in the CSS for our example, um, or this right here. So in the CSS, let's hop inside the container um, and we're going to say down here grid template columns and this right here lets us specify the amount of columns and also their sizes. So we're going to say 1FR, 1FR and then 1FR. So here we're specifying three columns since we have three values separated by a space. 
and the width of those columns is one fraction of the total remaining space. So basically, we've got three evenly spaced columns, which are going to shrink in size as we shrink our browser because it is a fraction of the available space. Okay, and that is all for the columns. If you wanted to simplify um, uh, this declaration, you could instead say repeat, then three, and then your value, so one fr. And basically, doing this is the exact same as saying one fr, one fr, and then one fr. Um, so now we can specify the amount of rows. For this, we're going to say grid template rows in a very similar way. And for this, it's going to be a bit more complicated, but not too much. So let's go back in the example and we can see right here, we've of course got the four rows. Uh, the header row is 50 pixels in height, okay? These two right here um, are going to be the same height, but they're going to be, once again, a fraction of the available space. And the bottom one here is 100 pixels fixed. So essentially, uh, the top and the and the actual bottom rows are going to be fixed heights of 50 and 100 pixels, and these two are going to be a fraction of the left or remaining space. Which means, if I was to uh, shrink this browser height, we can see that only the two middle uh, rows are changing their height. The header and the footer remain fixed. So for this. Let's go back inside here. We're going to say 50 pixels for the first row, and then 1 fr, 1 fr, and then 100 pixels for the bottom row. Of course, these two are absolute, and uh, these two are fractional, and they can shrink um, if they need to when the browser resizes. So now we've specified the columns and the rows. I can save this and then refresh the browser. Inside the dev tools, if I was to hover over the container, we can see that Chrome gives us um, a representation of our layer. Of course, we can see we have all of our rows and columns uh, working perfectly fine. So now we can move on to specifying a gap between each one of our areas here. So for this, it is very straightforward. We can simply say gap and make this 10 pixels, for example. Saving this and refreshing gives us this right here. Of course, a 10 pixels gap, excluding the edges of the container. If you wanted to add a 10 pixels gap on the edges, uh, this can be done using padding and then box sizing. Let's go back inside here and do that. So we can say padding, make this 10 pixels, the same as the actual gap size, and box sizing of border box uh, to contain the padding as being part of the total width of the container. Let's save this, and now we have this right here, which is identical to our container in both these two examples. So now, essentially, we are finished with the container. Um, I do want to um, go back inside here and just add a new uh, rule set for container and then div. So I'm going to say padding here and make this 10 pixels and say border at one pixel solid and then black. So now essentially every uh, grid item, so header and all the content and the footer, each one of those divs are going to have a border. Um, so we can actually see how they look and how many uh, rows and columns they span. So now, so now let's move on to creating the header. We can make a new div here with a class of header and just say header as the content. So now if I save this and refresh, uh, we can see that the header is taking up a single column and a single row in terms of its uh, size. Okay. So to make the header span uh, the remaining rows, so row number, sorry, our columns, so column number two and column number three, this can be done using the grid column start and the grid column end properties. So uh, let's go inside here, and I'm going to say uh, for the class of header, uh, grid column start, and make this one and say grid column end and make this four. So to explain what the one and the four means, basically here, you're specifying the grid line number. So a grid line is basically lines between your rows and your columns. So I'm gonna be showing you what that means uh, right now. So in the browser, um, as we can see here, 
we've got a total of four grid lines on the horizontal, sorry, on the vertical axis. We have right here at the edge, this is grid line number one. We then have grid line number two right here, and then grid line number three just about here, and then line number four just about here. Okay? That's very important to understand uh, when it comes to making your uh, items span multiple rows or multiple columns. The same goes for the horizontal axis. Okay, we of course have um, grid line number one just up here. Okay, number two, and then of course number three, number four, and then number five just down here. So that is what I mean by grid lines. So when I specify a grid column start of one and an end of four, I mean that the header is gonna start at number one and finish at number four. So now saving this and refreshing gives us this right here. For further clarification, if I make this grid column end and say three, save this and refresh, we can see now it goes to three. So one, two and then three. Okay, so perfect. So let's just set this back to be four. Okay, so now we can move on to creating um, uh, the content right here. So uh, this is where I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I'm gonna first show you how to do uh, these two columns for this content number one. And then after that, I'll be showing you how to change that so it actually expands, so, uh, sorry, actually expands uh, two rows and then two columns just like this one. Okay, so back inside here, let's specify uh, two more elements for each one of those content areas. So I can say right here, a class of content dash large, and we can say right here, content number one, and make this A, and then make this B. So with this right here, um, if I save this and refresh, we can see it is successfully flowed across to the second row, and uh, the actual items themselves are once again taking up um, a single uh, piece of area, so a single row and a single column, okay? So now we're going to simply, uh, in a very similar way to the header, we're going to make these two span multiple rows. So you may have guessed we're going to be using the grid row start and the grid row end uh, to achieve that. Let's target the content large class and make this grid row start. We can make it start, of course, at number two and a grid row end. And this time I'm going to be using um, span two. So basically span two is an alternative to specifying an actual grid line number. And uh, let's just save this and refresh. We can see we get this result right here. So of course the grid row start was two. So this uh, second grid line right here. And we used uh, span. So when I said span two, it basically means we're gonna start here and then span two lines. So of course span, we have line number three right here. And then line number four just down here. So start at two and then span two gives us this result right here. Of course, as an alternative, I could simply just say four instead of using the span two. It works the exact same way. Save this, refresh, and of course we get no difference. So I'll just set this back to being uh, span two. Uh, so now if we want to make this, uh, so this single content uh, spans also, um, you know, this uh, second column here, just like this one, uh, this can be done quite easily. I'm just going to be removing uh, this second content uh, item and making this simply content number one. So now we can go inside here and we can also say grid column start and make this one and then grid column end and make this three. So essentially we're combining both the grid row and the grid column. So now save this and refresh and we can see right here, we start at column number one and we finish at column number three right here. And of course, um, the row spanning is still in effect. So now we get this large box spanning multiple rows and then multiple columns. So now moving on uh, to the tiny boxes on the right side here, this is going to be very straightforward. Uh, we're going to simply create two more elements. So content small 
and also content small just here. Um, and for this, we can say content number two and then content number three. Save this, of course. Uh, these ones also flow naturally, uh, so they're in the correct spot. And that is all for the small content items. Uh, so for the footer, it's going to work in the same way as the header, but I'm going to be showing you a different way to specify um, your column spans. So back inside here, let's create the element for the footer. So with a class of footer just like this, and the CSS rule set for footer is going to say grid-column, and we're going to say one forward slash and then span three. So for this, this is basically just shorthand for saying uh, grid column start at one and grid column end at span three. So basically this right here is the equivalent to this right here. You separate your start and your end with a forward slash. So now saving this and refreshing is going to give us this result right here, exactly what we want. I might just go back and make this actually say footer. So one last thing I want to show you is going to be the combination of the grid templates on the container in a very similar way as we did right here. So for this, we can simply say grid template and we're going to firstly specify the row. So basically this guy right here, then a forward slash and then say repeat three, one FR just like this. So now this right here in a similar way to this one, this is the exact same as saying this right here. It is simply just a shorthand. So now getting rid of this is going to give us the exact same result. Let's save this and refresh and we can see right here, of course, we get the same result. And that's how to create a basic layout from scratch using CSS Grid. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.